thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to talk to you about hydrogen today. And first I have a disclaimer for you all to read. And then on my next slide I will remind you what hydrogen is, what sort of a company it is, and what we are focusing on. And we are a Swedish biotech that has been around for quite some years and we are developing cell therapies. And the whole idea is to develop cell therapies that uh, make the immune system uh, counteract the immune system when it's become your enemy. So if you see on this slide, we have a couple of different uh, situations when this can happen. And one of them is when you are treated with a drug and you start building up uh, uh, antibodies against that. Then you can try to re-train <laughs> re, um, uh, your, your uh, immune system. And then you have the transplanted organ situation as well as when you have autoimmune diseases. Just because I just recently joined as the acting CEO of uh, Hydrogen, I thought I'd give you a little background who I am. I've been in the drug development space for over 30 years. I've been in various roles as a CEO, as project leader, as business development, as well as clinical development, particularly in this phase where Hydrogen is today between preclinical and clinical phase. I've also been working five years in, in the board of Hydrogen. And I've been given the opportunity to really work in Hydrogen during this very exciting and transforming time because we're just about to start our first clinical trial, which I will talk to you a lot about. And if you remember then the three different areas that we are active in, I also have a slide showing our development pipeline with the three different programs that we are working with. And they represent different kind of, uh, of opportunities. And the first program is the IDO8 program. Then it's really trying to de develop a drug for hemophilia A patients where they have uh, developed uh, antibodies versus their factor A treatment. And that's what I'm going to talk most about today. But we have two other programs as follow-ups. I do T, it's more versus organ transplantations and in, uh, in uh, donor, living donor uh, patients with kidney transplant. And then the next is more general for autoimmune diseases. So that's our portfolio. But today, as I said, I'm mainly going to focus on the IDO8 uh, program because we think we have the most exciting things happening in this program at the moment. So what is it then, like I said, the factor VIII treatment in hemophilia A? Many of you know about a lot of factor VIII drugs, and I think Sweden has played a very important part with having manufacturing of, of things like Refacto, uh, recombinant factor VIII treatment, and lately with Sobe developing Elocta, that's a more long-acting factor VIII. So that is how you treat uh, hemophilia patients today. However, about 30% of these patients are really developing in inhibitors, and that is really antibodies against their factor VIII treatment, which really makes them that their factor VIII treatment doesn't work. So they have no use of that anymore, which leaves them quite sort of le left without any good treatment. And the way that we're treating that today in, in the clinics is that you put them on a scheme that is called immune tolerance induction. And that is to try to increase the dose of factor VIII for long periods to see uh, if you can overcome the autoimmune response. And that's more like if you go and have uh, your, if you try to tolerate, if you have a pollen allergy or something, you try to treat with high. Uh, antigens for a long time to try to take away the, the allergy. It's the similar. The, the big difference here is that this is a very cumbersome treatment for the patients. Usually have to treat for a very long time, from half a year to many years, and you have to go to maybe to the clinic to get your IV infusions once per day or once every second day for all these times, so it's very cumbersome for the patients. And then uh, this costs a lot of money because you treat with very high doses of factor VIII as well. And factor VIII is a very expensive drug. And uh, last but not least, this ITI treatment fails in 30% of the patients. And also the non-factor um, products that have recently been registered or in the development, they are not really doing anything about the frequency of these inhibitors. 
So, and to, according to the KULs that we're working with in hemophilia, the tolerance to factor eight remains to be the ultimate goal. So that is what we are trying to do with our first autologous cell therapy. It's called itol dco 28 and that the aim is to reprogram the immune system of the patient to really, again, be able to respond to their factor eight when they need it. So the, the main... Uh, task for this treatment is to reduce or really eradicate the inhibitors. And what we see in the future, we see that this could be an alternative to even doing the ITI eventually, and, and even to maybe prevent the development in inhibitors. So when you start the treatment with factor eight in these patients, you could give this cell therapy at the same time. So our vision is that the one course of our cell therapy should really be instead of this, uh, either developing inhibitors or having this lengthy and inconvenient ITI treatment. So that's quite a novel way. We have no competition really here. We're not replacing any other drugs at the market. So it's a unique position that we're trying to develop for. And like I said, we're about to start the first in human uh, study. This will be an open single dose dose escalation study with IV uh, infusions of our cell therapy. It has a classic three plus three design, so you have three different dose levels that we're going to take. And in this case, it's number of cells that you actually administer to the patients. This time we're going to do it in hemophilia patients that already have developed inhibitors and that have failed their ITI treatment. So that's the starting point. But if we then find good effect, we can continue to, to the more um, uh, the, the before ITI. But the main purpose of a study like this is safety and tolerability. But as we're doing it in hemophilia patients, we will also be able to explore the different clinical responses to see if we already can do something about their inhibitors. The coordinating investigator is Jan Astemark in Lund, and he's a key, um, he's a professor in clinical coagulation medicine and, and uh, will be coordinating the different sites. And we have quite good momentum to start this clinical phase study uh, with ITOL DC. As we have already announced, we have the regulatory approvals in place. We're doing all the things that need to be in place in order to start this. And we're also trying to open other study sites because there is a large interest, right? So also outside the Nordic countries to be participating in this. So we're planning for, for study sites out of, uh, outside of Norway and Sweden. And the whole concept with IDO8, how important it is that will also validate the concept for our other programs. So this will be a key, key uh, um, uh, step for the company. Just to understand a little bit about the unique cell therapy for every patient. We are using your autologous cell therapy. And that is you're actually taking the cells from the patients. It's monocytes, a type of white blood cells. And so you do it like you're actually drawing blood from a patient. And, and that cells are then shipped to a manufacturing site. In, in our instance, we're manufacturing and, and we're training the, cell, the cells to tolerate um, factor eight in this case. And that is done in Holland. And then it has to return. So it's quite a huge logistic exercise to do this study. But it's quite exciting at the same time to use this new technology to see if we can uh, bring a very specific um, immune uh, tolerogenic cell therapy. And with starting the clinical study, we will also uh, ex uh, increase the external activities. We have already started to reach out to future partners that have the interest to commercialize this, this cell therapy or any of our other cell therapies towards commercialization in order to treat patients eventually with this unmet medical need. These are different programs. We're also exploring possibilities to contribution for soft money for the development of our portfolio or collaboration. So, so it's sort of very interesting time to start talking more externally. And with that, I should say also that the news flow during um, uh, this second half of 2022, uh, it will be very focused on the clinical study and we expect the first patient to be included. And as you understand, they will not be treated immediately because they will have to then withdrawn cells to be, to be sent to Holland and then 
come back and then be treated, and then you will have evaluations after the first patient and after each cohort of patients for safety and tolerability. So there will be a news flow. As it is an open study, it's quite, uh, quite a lot of news compared to a blind study. And we will also be present at scientific conferences and present our technology and have different publications. So it's quite a lot of external focus during the autumn on these things. And then I should also mention that tomorrow we are actually starting our, our warrant program is starting. And uh, the facts are actually found on, on this slide, um, what the funds will be used for and, and how many f warrants you need. And as you can see, it's um, today the share price is under our exercise uh, price. And, but you see that the exercise period is from the tomorrow until 29th of uh, September and more details are found on our website. So with that, I will end my presentation. Uh, you treat those monocytes and you claim that they have become tolerogenic. Mm -hmm. How do you know? We have looked at the in vitro, that is, you, you make it in vitro experiments looking at and seeing that they are tolerogenic and they have been compared to other. There are no really in vivo animal models in, in cell therapy, so that is the challenge. But this is something that we have followed from our scientific uh, group that has worked very much and also compared to other tolerogenic uh, cell therapies than have been that we have we have better uh, tolerogenicity than they have. So um, autologous therapies uh, sounds expensive. What's their the payers perspective on this? It is expensive. It will be expensive. Probably it will be less expensive once you have gotten into place. I think what we have seen is, first of all, that you can have manufacturing hubs. You don't have to manufacture at each hospital, but you can actually transport them. So we have a way of making the cell therapies endure for a couple of days transported. So that's one thing of getting it down. Then when you look at this, what I didn't mention was uh, that when you look at these um, uh, ITI treatments, they cost millions of crowns. So they could range from 5 million to maybe even up to 2 million for a treatment of ITI. So if we were to replace that, there is some room on the pricing level. I'm not going to go into what exactly the price will be, but there is some room. So I do think cell therapies could be viable in this kind of treatment. So you have to look at this, of course, into every different indications that you're looking at, how it will be eventually. With you uh, hunting for a new CEO, what uh, what kind of person are you looking for? Uh, <laughs> I'm not going. We haven't started that recruitment, or haven't gone out publicly to say what we have done. Uh, that uh, that's up to the board. <laughs> so and uh, speaking of the board, you have a few new members. What are you hoping that they uh, contribute going forward? We have new, two new board members, as you say, uh, and from, from the owner side, which of course we see as a large advantage to have the owners more... Uh, they, they shows their engagement in us and their willingness to come in on the inside and work with us. So I think it's good. It's always good for a company to have a clear um, sort of bond between the owners and, and the, the board. So we, it's a very positive sign, I should say. So strength sign. Yep. Okay. Um, and I'm wondering, how would you describe the general interest in this kind of new cell therapies from the markets and from the hospitals? I, I think it's amazing. I think I've been talking to a lot of external companies or looking at this, and they would say that five years ago cell therapies were still sort of, yeah, it's science fiction. Should we, will it really work? I think it is changing now. There is a larger and larger interest from the outer world that they, they understand that it does work and that you can uh, do something with it. There are a lot of pl practical uh, aspects on it, and particularly for autologous cells. But, but if you believe that they can do what they promise to do, I think people are interested and keen to learn and see where in the treatment space can you find room for this. Of course, like you asked about the, the pricing, it will be important to make sure that you can price your drugs. It's not a 
10, one dollar drug every day. It's it's a one treatment. It's it's quite expensive. But you should try, like gene therapy, you should try to understand what you're trying to avoid, what you will not have to do when you have this new type of treatments. So have you noticed any effect on the company? Is it easier to raise money now when there's a larger interest and maybe more knowledge about this kind of We topics? hope that this will be a larger <laughs> interest. When you see this outer world, then, then you have the whole situation in our industry today. So, so but, but I do think for cell therapies, I think um, that... <laughs> that there is a larger interest in this area. So I hope that that will be reflected by a larger interest in also investing. And you mentioned that you're interested in partnering with other companies. Yes. What mm. kind of partners are you looking for? Um, I think for, for uh, what I'm thinking is, and maybe I'm thinking wrong, but for IDO8, I'm thinking we, we want to find partners that are aware of our customers, which will be the hemophilia patients. So maybe those kind of companies could be companies that are interested in cell therapy generally. But I think if you look from a market perspective, it would fit well with, with the company already in selling in the hemophilia space. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you.